Now you know my name, and so we are as also organizer, but we also uh, been participant, and we use the CME spatial temporal convolutional convolutional neural network uh, for stroke cl classification in table tennis games. Um, so we've submitted uh, four runs, and uh, so our best run achieved twenty three percent. So, but to to what do they correspond? Oop. Um yeah. So first uh we uh we did the data construction. So for that we have videos, so we did the RGB extraction. Then we uh computed the optical flow. So we used dense even dense uh inverse search and also deep deep flow. And then we calculated the region of interest from the flow. Here you have some um examples. So this is a dense event search inverse search uh, and we also multiplied it with a va uh, with a foreground because uh, a dense event search is very noisy and here we use deep flow we didn't need to uh, multiply with uh, the mask with a foreground because it's already uh, quite clean uh, also uh, we shown in one of the papers as the data normalization was uh, also very important in classification so we used uh, normal uh, normalization uh, I know it's not a good name, uh, but we use the distribution of the maximum values of the flow uh, to then uh, divide them um, uh, in consequence. And here you can see uh, all the data are distributed between minus one and one when it's uh, max normalization and when it's hours, we, we have a much more um, spread distribution. And also to avoid uh, overfitting, we use the data augmentation so the we do a spatial segmentation which is uh, centered in the region of interests. We use translation, rotation, zooms, flip. Um, we also use RGB uh, channel swap. And we did also a temporal segmentation by extracting 100 uh, frames, consecutive frames, in one of the annotation uh, following a Gaussian distribution. So as you can see, this is the same stroke. So you can see, of course, the channel that has, has been uh, swapped. Uh, but uh, what is also interesting is that you can see the stroke is not happening at the same time and they start at the same, uh, actually at the same moment. So this is due to uh, our data augmentation. Uh, the model, so we decided to use 3D convolution. For that we have cuboids uh, of data in RGB and in uh, optical flow. We train from scratch uh, this model which takes RGB optical flow uh, in a parallel way and then we fuse them at the end uh, using a bila uh, bilinear um, dense uh, layer and uh, we did two um, two different runs actually for each optical flow one with uh, train with 250 epochs with a split data set and we also tr retrain from scratch but using the whole data set by taking the same number of epochs where we got uh, the best results to have more uh, data for uh, classification so the runs submitted what to what do they correspond uh, so for the split, for example, uh, the dense event search obtained a better result, uh, but when we are using the full one, uh, it's a deep flow that uh, obtain uh, a better result, so we actually increased our score from uh, to 5%. Uh, and we were all actually surprised to uh, see the score decreasing when we are using the full data set. I think it's just bad luck uh, when we, we do the training. Uh, so our best run. We obtained 23%. Uh, what we can see is that we've been very good with uh, offensive forehand heat, which is a stroke that is actually very um, often uh, used in, uh, in the game. But maybe we did that too good because we also uh, do the same thing with uh, one of the defensive forehand block, which is actually uh, very different. And also we were surprised to see uh, those uh, classifications that we didn't uh, classify with a good service. But still, we've seen that the services were classified. So actually it's good to see that, I mean it's good. It's bad because it should be dia in the diagonal, but it's uh, quite close to the other services. And this is where the other confusion metrics are useful. So when we are checking forehand and backhand, we see that the performances are okay with 77%, but still we are surprised because when we see forehand and backhand, it should be something easy. So this is where I suspect that there are some misclassified stroke. And uh, also, uh, when we uh, do this, when we check the services or the offensive and defensive uh, types, uh, we are quite good at services. 
uh, but uh, we did classify some services in defensive and also in offensive because the services, as we said at the beginning, are much longer and we did the classification based on the middle of the annotation, meaning that you don't see when the person doesn't, uh, when the person actually uh, releases the ball, meaning that you see only the stroke, which, why, uh, we classify them as offensive or defensive and not services. And when we uh, do the, um, the combination of both of them, we, we achieved 55% uh, of all. Uh, so the conclusion, and it's kind of the same conclusion than before, that we need, we need negative samples to avoid overfitting. And those uh, negative samples uh, can be built from the annotations that we had by just taking some samples between the other annotations. And uh, uh, as I said before, the multi-label and our cascade would be very, very interesting. Thank you again. I try to, to do as fast as possible to manage the gap. Thank you.